Welcome to Goobertown Hobbies. My name is Brent. I just got back from an awesome vacation and I wanted to talk about it. Everyone needs a vacation now and then, but leaving your hobby desk behind doesn't mean that you can't still make some great progress. A change of scenery can be quite beneficial. It gives our life a bit of a reset, it lets in some fresh energy, and it's a wonderful source of inspiration. Getting outside of our crafting layer is probably good for our health in general, but it also exposes us to new opportunities. No matter what your hobby is, you can find a way to make the absolute most of your vacation. Capitalize on that leisure time and those new surroundings. My favorite hobby is painting minis, and so that's what I'll focus on in this video, but the general message here is totally applicable to almost any hobby or craft. In this video, I'm going to talk about how you can pack a few things up and take your hobby on the road if that's what you want to do. And I'm also going to talk about other ways that you can make hobby gains by taking full advantage of your time off and your new locale. When you're away from home, you can approach your passion in a new way, you can soak up that inspiration, and you can maybe even do a bit of scavenging for supplies. Before we dive in here, let me say that it's okay to take a vacation completely away from your hobby. It's okay to leave every element of your typical routine back at home. You're on vacation. This is your chance to hit pause on everything that's been going on. Experience a whole new piece of what life has to offer. For many people, that's the whole point of a vacation. Stepping completely outside of those things that have come to define us. Experiencing a different part of the world, a different daily rhythm, and a different side of ourselves. A lot of people see vacations as a way to reset. To let accumulated stress drain away and to get some distance from our troubles, be they big or small. One way to make the most of your vacation is to really embrace that rejuvenation. On vacation, you can live life differently than how you've been living it at home. You can live your life better than the way you've been living it. You can be better than who you've been. More than who you've been. You can use your vacation to figure out what really matters in life. When you come back to the world, you can choose to come back fresh and inspired. You can let that renewed spirit of positive energy flow into every aspect of your life. Be better to your friends, better to your family. Be better to your neighbors and to your coworkers. And yes, be better at your hobby. Return to that hobby desk fresh, inspired, and completely ready to tackle that next project. But hey, there might be a rainy day on your vacation. Maybe you'll get driven inside a small cabin with a whole bunch of family and no internet. If that's the case, you might be really glad if you brought along some hobby supplies. Let's start in and talk about how to literally take your hobby on vacation, if that's what you want to do. If you've been watching this channel for a little while, you know that I love a good challenge. Placing a restriction or two on your hobby is a great way to learn. If you're traveling, you'll probably have to leave most of your supplies at home. You'll pack a small bag with the true necessaries, and you'll hope that you didn't forget anything too important. This is an opportunity to learn how to do more with less, and to focus on the fundamentals. For painting minis, there's nothing at all wrong with working with a limited color palette. I own many bottles of paint, but when it comes down to it, I can be perfectly happy painting with just a few colors, at least for a few days. Sometimes picking the perfect shade of blue can be a bit paralyzing. It's so much easier if you only have one blue in your travel kit. When you take a hobby project on your travels, try to pick wisely. Pick something that you've been meaning to accomplish, but doesn't require a ton of supplies. The worst thing that can happen is that you realize you're missing something that you really need. For example, trying to finish painting a model on vacation might be risky because you might forget a color that really needs to be touched up. Sometimes it's actually easier to start a new project when you're on vacation. Assembling models only requires a few tools and some glue. Or, if you bring some primed models with you, the base coating step is nice because it requires spending long periods of time with just a few colors. 
It also doesn't take too much attention, so you can still soak in the ambiance and be with your loved ones. On a previous trip, I took a unit of minis that needed to be base coated. I spent several relaxing hours just painting on two different colors. I made a lot of progress on those minis, and all with a minimal travel kit. On this trip, I decided that I'd just do some skills practice. I figured that it was about time for me to learn how to paint non-metallic metals. There's a first time for everything, and sometimes you just need to dive right in. Going into seclusion with a few paints and a goal sounded like a great idea. I took a couple of Stormcast models along to practice on, and a small starter set of paints. I also took a pack of craft store brushes and my wet palette. I packed a lamp and a jar for water too, just to make sure that I could find those things in my new location. Practicing techniques like layering, blending, and glazing is always a good use of time. These things just require a few paints and a brush, so skills practice like this is a great activity to bring along on vacation. Ideally, you can find yourself a nice little table where you can set up and get to work. Just a little corner is all you need, whether that's in a hotel room or a creepy hunting cabin. Make sure to go outside when you're on vacation though. That natural sunlight can be useful and delightful. So many hobbies can be simplified and transported if that's what you want to do. If your hobby is something other than mini painting, there's still probably a way that you can condense it down to the essentials and take it with you. The new setting, the limitation of using a travel kit, and the extra leisure time that you'll likely have on your vacation can all add up to some great hobby progress. Another great way to make the most of your holiday and advance your craft is to draw inspiration from where you are. Do and see and feel things that are outside of your everyday experience. Really drink in your surroundings. Notice the colors and the patterns. Think about the people and the creatures who live there, now or in the past or in the future. Whether you're in a modern city or walking on cobblestones or just bobbing on a lake, pay attention to where you are. Hopefully, when you're on vacation, you have less stressors to think about, and you can just focus on your surroundings on a different level. You never know what ideas you might get, or what details might be useful in your art. In the mini painting hobby, we often base our minis to exist in a certain setting, be that plains or wetlands or a futuristic city. For mini bases or dioramas or paintings on canvas, it's the details that can really sell the effect. If you're in a city, notice the cigarette butts and the graffiti. Trash on the side of the road might not be pretty, but it's life and it's real and it's inspiration. If you're out in the country, pay attention to all of the creatures that live there, great and small. See the insects on the water's surface. See the mosquitoes, the dragonflies. See the frogs and the birds and the larger creatures too. Look at how they move. What are they doing? What are they thinking? Every creature and every detail here contribute to the total story of what this place is. And yet, I know that within that hole, there are things that grab your attention and focus your creativity. There are elements of this place that you want to know more about, that you want to explore. You're seeing things here that you want to tell somebody about. Maybe you just see an interesting setting, but maybe you see more. If you look, maybe you see the start to a story or the end to a story. Let your imagination run free. If this setting were part of Middle Earth or Westeros, who would live here? How deep is this lake and what monsters lurk down there? If aliens came from the skies, where would they land? What would they do? Sometimes you just need to let your creativity out for a walk and see where it ends up. As you're floating around on a lake, you may realize that you've always wanted to paint a bird. Or maybe you come up with an idea for a tribalistic race of bird people who only emerge during the full moon. 
Maybe these ideas will be directly useful to you in some way, or maybe they'll take you down another side alley and lead you to some crazy and incredible idea for your hobby. I don't know where your creativity will take you, but I want you to be open to it, and I want you to be ready for it. The world around us can inspire in so many ways. It can give us ideas and show us beauty in the most sweeping sense of that word. The world around us can also show us beauty in a very practical way. Pull your focus back for a minute and look at the colors. On a primal level, we all recognize this as a beautiful day. Beauty is subjective, but all of humanity evolved to know that this is what beauty looks like. This is comfort and fresh air. This is happiness. Look at those colors. That color palette brings up an emotion in all of us. None of those colors clash with each other because we were made to expect them together and to want them together. We appreciate this combination of colors on some deep biological and spiritual level. I'm growing as a painter and I try to pay attention to these things. If a landscape looks awesome, part of the reason is those natural and powerful color combinations. I encourage you to notice them, delight in them, and learn from them. As you're vacationing and noticing your surroundings, there are plenty of places to look for this kind of aesthetic inspiration, from the sweeping landscapes to the shimmering scales of a trout. As you're traveling, you may find yourself with unique hobby opportunities. One of my hobbies is making videos, so this trip gave me a ton of opportunities that I didn't have at home. In line with the mini painting hobby though, vacations are a great place to search for materials, especially for gluing onto bases. The classic example is sands and pebbles. I like to say that you should always take your Tupperware to the beach. And the lake is no different. On the forest floor you can find leaves and twigs and moss and bits of bark. Just look around you and see if you get any ideas. Remember to never take bark off of a live tree though, that can hurt or even kill a tree. Now of course, if somebody already cut down the trees, that bark is fair game. On this vacation, the materials that I was really happy to find were cedar bark and birch bark. The cedar bark is very stringy, and could probably be really interesting on a swamp base for one of my minis. Birch bark is strikingly beautiful, and I'm not quite sure what I'll do with it yet. Maybe a tiny birch bark longhouse or a canoe, those are certainly options. Your trip can offer plenty of new opportunities, ways to advance your craft on the road that you can't do at home. Some of these chances you might be able to predict, and for others you'll just have to have your eyes and your mind open. Be ready to seize your moment when it comes. For most of us, our hobby isn't the main reason why we chose to take a vacation but that doesn't mean that a vacation can't be absolutely great for our hobby progress. Maybe you choose to take a complete vacation away from your hobby desk and come back fresh, or maybe you actually make some progress on the road. Vacations are precious for a whole host of reasons, and I encourage you to make the most of them. Let me tell you a little secret. I didn't actually get much painting done on this trip, but I did get a lot of rest and I had a lot of fun on the water, and I had an absolute blast making this video. I hope that it was entertaining and relaxing, and maybe got you to think a little bit. If you're not subscribed to Goobertown Hobbies yet, then I really encourage you to do so. Most of the videos on this channel involve me crafting or painting something from beginning to end. In that respect, this video was a bit of a vacation from that format, but at the same time, I think this video was true to the general tone of the channel, in the way that I try to provide interesting visuals, useful, relaxing conversation, and maybe even a bit of inspiration. If you're already subscribed, then I'd encourage you to share this video. Maybe show it to a friend who's having a bad day and needs a little dose of nature. Anyway, I'm back in civilization now, and next week's video will be a return to hobby stuff. Actually, next week's video is an ambitious one that I've been meaning to do for a long time. So yeah, as you probably noticed, this vacation was great. I got the chance to hang out with my family, whom I love, even though I completely cut them from this video. 
I also really enjoyed being out in nature, and capturing these fun shots to try to share the experience a little bit. It's my hope that this video brings a few people a little bit of joy. Well, that's all for this time. As always, I thank you so much for watching.